Hello and welcome to Talent Sprint. This video we are going to talk of a very important policy initiative undertaken by the Central Bank of the country, namely Reserve Bank of India, and that is the monetary policy. This monetary policy video will be in two parts, the first of which we will see now. The monetary policy as defined by the Reserve Bank of India aims to control the money supply in the country. The monetary policy is the process by which the monetary authority of a country like the central bank or a currency board controls the supply of money often targeting inflation as the interest rate to ensure price stability and general trust in the currency. The important points to be noted here are they control the inflation rate or the interest rate to ensure price stability and general trust in the currency. So the entire monetary policy action of the central bank is aimed at controlling the money supply in the country by which the inflation rate can be controlled and by which the price can be stabilized. When all these things happen, the trust of the general public in their currency and the trust of the financial world in their currency will go up by several notches. And that is the aim of the monetary policy. So a monetary policy by definition is the process by which the monetary authority of a country, namely the central bank or the currency board, intervenes and announces a series of measures aimed at tackling the money supply in the country. That is the basic aim of a monetary policy. As the name indicates, monetary policy means the one which controls the money supply in the country. And what is the aim of mon controlling money supply? One is to keep the inflation under a certain target. The Central Bank of India always gets targets for uh, the inflation from the uh, central government and it is the duty of Central Bank of India to adhere to these targets in terms of inflation rates. When I, what is inflation? We will see at a later time during this video. But let's for example, uh, let's for now understand that, that the monetary policy aims to control the inflation rate and it ensures the stability of prices. Obviously, the stability of prices will lead to a, a trust in the currency. So in India, we are talking of the rupee and the rupee is the medium of currency used in India. So whenever a monetary policy is announced in the country in India, it is always let it is talked of in rupees only. So that is the basic point which we do need to understand. The Reserve Bank of India in the country is vested with the responsibility of conducting monetary policy. This policy, this responsibility is explicitly vested with the Reserve Bank of India under the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934. When we talk of banking and when we talk of monetary policy, the Reserve Bank of India becomes an integral part of the whole system and the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934 is the basis on which the entire monetary policy is formed, framed and regulated. As I told you, the objective of monetary policy or the goals of the monetary policy, the primary objective is to maintain price stability with growth. There are two things to be involved, uh, to, be, to be noted here. One is to maintain price stability and the other thing is with growth. Price stability is a necessary precondition to sustainable growth. I think it's very uh, important to understand the different components of this statement. The primary objective is to main maintain price stability. Unless prices are stable, the economy will go into a doldrums. You would have seen in recent times how the prices of various commodities have either risen very sharply following a very strong increase in demand or a shortage in supply, or the prices have fallen very drastically because of uh, oversupply and the lack of demand. It is the responsibility of the monetary authorities in the country to ensure that they devise a monetary policy that enables the prices to be kept stable. And price stability is a necessary precondition for economic growth and economic growth in a sustainable fashion. For economy to grow in a sustainable fashion, it is very important that the prices have to be contained. That is a very important step. When we talk of inflation, now let's understand what is inflation. Inflation is the rate at which 
the price of a commodity or a or an item of use increases over a period of time it is a relative term inflation as we all understand is we always talk of inflation when the prices have gone up inflation by in in academic terms mean the increase in prices that is called the inflation in more elaborate terms it means too much of money chasing too few goods we all can relate to this fact how our grandfathers used to say that when today when we tell our grandfather that one cup of ice cream costs 150 rupees he would say that that he could run an entire family for an entire month with 150 rupees way back in 1920s or 1930s the difference in prices between 1920s and 1930s and 2017 is what we know what we call as inflation is as simple i think this is the simplest way of understanding inflation to give you a personal example i started driving a car when i was 16 years old that was some 40 50 or 40 years back the price of petrol was 73 paise a liter today the price of petrol is 78 rupees a liter that means it has gone up by more than 100 times that is the inflation in the price of petrol is more than 100 times this is how you should uh, 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 understand inflation when inflation goes up there is a price which goes up the price of all the commodities will go up and when the prices go up obviously demand will supply demand will suffer people will not be interested in buying the same goods and services at a much higher rate of price so the demand will fall and when the demand falls the economy shrinks that is the effect of inflation let me repeat it for your understanding when inflation goes up prices go up when prices go up demand falls and when demand falls the economy shrinks that is the inflation effect now the monetary policy in india is always irrefutably linked to the pricing stability and to the inflation targets inflation target is set by the government of india in consultation with the rbi once in every 5 years for means that means that in a band of 5 years the government of india says to reserve bank of india that you have to maintain inflation between this band of x percent to y percent in the next 5 years time 4% consumer price infla- consumer price index inflation is the target for the period 5 August 5th 2016 to March 31st 2021 as we saw once in every 5 years the inflation target is set and for the period between 5th August 2016 to 31st March 2021 4% is the inflation target 4% is the consumer price index inflation target what is consumer price index uh, what is consumer price index or the cpi the cpi is nothing but the price at which the customer buys a particular product for example if the if the product if the um, cost of this pen let's for example is 10 rupees this year and if we are in assuming an inflation rate of 4% on this product that means the price of this pen cannot go up by more than 4 uh, more than 40 paise that means year on year inflation if it is set at 4% we are saying that from 10 rupees the next year it will become 10.4 rupees and thereafter in multiples of 4% for every every year for the next 5 years so the, for the next 5 years the, the government of india has told the reserve bank of india that they have to keep the consumer price index inflation index at 4% as i told you consumer price index is nothing but the price at which the consumer the ultimate consumer buys a particular product or service now when we talk of targets being set by the government there is always a tolerance limit tolerance limit means we say that plus or minus we very often say we plus or minus targets when we give a target we always say you have to achieve it uh, 100% but if not 100% at least 95% or if you can do it excellently you, you reach a 110% target and so on 
So the tolerance limit which has been given to the Reserve Bank of India by the government of India is that the CPI cannot exceed 6% in any of these five years and the lower tolerance limit is 2%. In other words, the inflation in the country cannot come down by more than 2%. That means the rate of inflation cannot be less than 2%. A very interesting question will come about as to why there should be a lower target. Just like a higher target means high prices leading to lower demand leading to contraction of the economy, the very low prices when the price of a particular goods and service or let's say talk of commodities now for example let's talk of this pen itself if the price of this pen falls from 10 rupees let us say to 5 rupees will more people buy not necessarily it is not necessary that at low prices more people will buy it could also mean that people will have a doubt on the quality of the product so a very low inflation rate is also not good for the economy in as much as a very high inflation rate is not good for the economy. We have to see, we have to have a situation where the RBI has to balance the inflation in such a way that it is neither too high nor too low. So the, the tolerance limit given by the government of India to the Reserve Bank of India in terms of inflation is an upper limit of 6% and a lower limit of 2%. Who determines the policy interest rate required to achieve the inflation target? Now, in other words, this is the monetary policy process. What is the monetary policy process? The MPC or the Monetary Policy Committee determines the policy interest rate required to achieve the inflation target. The Monetary Policy Department, MPD, assists the MPC in formulating the monetary policy. The Financial Market Committee, FMC, means daily to review the liquidity conditions. So now this is how the monetary policy is formed. These three bodies, namely the Monetary Policy Committee, the Monetary Policy Department and the Financial Market Committee together, all these are bodies within the Reserve Bank of India. They are chaired by very senior persons in Reserve Bank of India. Together, all these policies making bodies in the Reserve Bank of India sit down and formulate the monetary policy of the country. When the monetary policy of a country is outlined, then monetary policy takes place into effect. How is the monetary policy done? We have seen that why is the monetary policy announced is because with a view to stabilizing prices and with a view to reaching the inflation targets set by the government of India. Now there are two methods in which RBI has its control on the monetary policy. One of which is the quantitative method and the other is the qualitative method. What the public sees will be only the quantitative methods. There are various quantitative methods which the RBI announces from time to time in its monetary policy review. This review is done once in a quarter and the monetary policy review will be telling us how the monetary policy is framed out, what are the quantitative methods by which the RBI plans to achieve the uh, targets of inflation set by the government of India and also what are the qualitative methods which the RBI plans to impose on the, on the uh, uh, industry and the public in general to achieve the inflation targets. The first method of monetary policy, the quantitative method or the instruments of monetary policy. We have seen what is the monetary policy, what is the monetary policy framework and now we come to the instruments of monetary policy. The instruments of monetary policy as I told you are in two, two uh, stages. One is the quantitative uh, methods and the other is the qualitative methods. The first amongst the quantitative methods is the repo rate. The repo rate is the rate at which the RBI provides liquidity to banks. In other words, the RBI provides overnight funds to banks against the collateral of government securities and other approved securities under the liquidity adjustment facility. Couple of things to be noted here. First, 
The repo rate is the rate at which the RBI provides liquidity to the banks, which means that whenever the banks are in need of money, the RBI comes in and gives them money. That rate is called the repo rate. And it is for an overnight period. Repo rates, repo is not given for indefinite periods of time. Repo money is always given by the RBI to the commercial banks for the overnight lending only. That means if they borrow today, they have to repay tomorrow. That is the overnight meaning of overnight funds. How do they give it? Is it a clean loan which is given to the banks? No. Banks have to give the collateral security in the form of government and other approved securities. Now, what are the government and other approved securities? We will see in a later half of this video. What are the approved securities? What are the various reserve ratios which the banks have to maintain? And against those approved securities, they have to give it as a collateral to Reserve Bank of India to get overnight funds under what is known as a LAF or a liquidity adjustment facility. Liquidity adjustment facility means that the, whenever the bank is in need of money, they have to borrow from the Reserve Bank of India in order to tide over their liquidity. That is why it's called the liquidity adjustment facility. And this liquidity adjustment facility is given in the form of repo funds by the Reserve Bank of India to <coughs> the commercial banks for an overnight period and against the collateral security of the government securities and other approved securities under the liquidity ar uh, arrangement facility. We have talked about what is the repo rate. Let's now talk about what is the reverse repo rate. The reverse repo rate is nothing but the opposite of repo rate. When the banks borrow money from the Reserve Bank of India, the rate of interest charged is the rate which is called the repo rate. And when the banks have excess funds, they park it with the Reserve Bank of India. Apart from the reserves which they have to park, they will park it with the Reserve Bank of India and they will give funds to the Reserve Bank of India for an interest which is known as a reverse repo rate. Reverse repo rate is the fixed interest rate currently 50 basis points below the repo rate at which the Reserve Bank absorbs liquidity on an overnight basis from banks against the collateral of eligible government securities under the LAF. Very similar to what we are talking of a repo rate, the only difference between a repo rate and a reverse repo rate is the fact that repo rate means the banks are borrowing money from Reserve Bank of India, whereas in the reverse repo rate, the banks are lending money to Reserve Bank of India, or in other words, whenever the banks have a surplus money, they park their money with the Reserve Bank of India, and that rate in which they park their funds with the Reserve Bank of India is called the reverse repo rate. What is a marginal standing facility? A marginal standing facility is a facility under which banks can borrow additional amount of overnight money from the Reserve Bank of India. Apart from the funds borrowed by them under the liquidity adjustment facility, the marginal standing facility also gives the banks an avenue borrowing money from the Reserve Bank of India on an overnight basis by, by dipping into their statutory liquidity ratio portfolio. What is statutory liquidity? We will see in the next few slides. But for the present, let's understand that whenever the banks want a marginal standing facility from the Reserve Bank of India, they have to dip into their SLR or statutory liquidity portfolio up to a limit which is currently 2% of their NDTL at a penal interest, which is currently 50 basis points above the repo rate. They can borrow only up to 2% of their net demand and time liabilities and at a penal interest which is 50 basis points above the repo rate. In other words, whenever the bank wants money, they have two avenues of borrowing from the Reserve Bank of India. One is called the liquidity adjustment facility under which they will borrow funds from the Reserve Bank of India by paying what is known as a repo rate. The second facility in which the banks, whenever they need urgent funds on an overnight basis, is called the marginal standing facility. Under the marginal standing facility, they get to, or in other words, under the marginal standing facility, the banks will get an additional money on an overnight basis other than the liquidity adjustment facility. They will get additional money from the RBI at a penal rate of interest. And the penal rate of interest is 50 basis points above the repo rate. What is the basis point? one hundredth of a 
uh, percentage is called one basis point. So 50 basis points means 0.50%. So they'll have to pay an interest rate of additionally 0.50% to borrow money from the Reserve Bank of India under the marginal standing facility, again on an overnight basis, provided they have to dip into their statutory liquidity ratio reserves. And this amount of borrowing cannot exceed more than 2% of their NDTL. This is a very important uh, thing to understand. What is an NDTL? We'll have to wait and watch. Marginal standing facility is nothing but a safety valve against unanticipated liquidity, sh liquidity shocks in the banking system. Whenever the banking system gets into a liquidity shock or liquidity crisis, the Reserve Bank of India does not want banks to fend for themselves. They come to the rescue by giving what is known as a marginal standing facility. This facility, as I told you, is available at a penal interest of more than of, of 50 basis points above the repo rate and subject to a limit of a maximum of 2% of their net demand and time liabilities. Now, what is NT or NDTL. NDTL is nothing but net demand and time liabilities. Demand liabilities are deposits of banks repayable on demand. Like for example, I told you the savings bank account and the current account deposits. And <clears throat> these are called demand liabilities. Time liabilities are deposits that are payable at the expiry of a fixed time period. Like fixed deposits or term deposits as they are called. Now the next instrument of the monetary policy or the quantitative instrument is the bank rate. The bank rate is the rate at which the Reserve Bank of India is ready to buy or rediscount bills of exchange or other commercial papers. It is published under section 49 of the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934. The bank, of, the bank rate is the basis on which the commercial banks announce their deposit rates and advances rate. It is because the rate at which the Reserve Bank of India is ready to buy or rediscount bills of exchange of commercial banks or, con or the other commercial papers of commercial banks is called the bank rate. And all the commercial banks, whenever they announce their deposit rates and especially their lending rates, it is always based on the bank rates only. This rate has been aligned to the marginal standing facility rate. More or less, the bank rate will be aligned to the MSF rate or the marginal standing facility rate. It, it changes automatically as and when the marginal standing facility rate changes alongside policy rate repo changes. Whenever the policy monetary policy announces a change in the uh, repo rate, obviously, whenever the repo rate is changed, the reverse rate, uh, the, the reverse repo rate also gets changed. And when the reverse repo rate gets uh, rate gets changed. The marginal standing facility rate gets changed and when the MSF gets uh, changed, the bank rate automatically gets changed. So all these are interlinked. Yet another quantitative method of controlling money supply in the country is called the OMO or the open market operations. Open market operations include both outright purchase and sale of government securities for injection and absorption of durable liquidity respectively. So this is called the open market operations. Now we come to a very important quantitative method adopted by the Reserve Bank of India in its efforts to increase or decrease money supply in the country. Contracting or expanding money supply in the country as adopted by the Reserve Bank of India forms a very, very important part in their quantitative methods to control price, to control money supply in the country and thereby stabilizing the price of the commodities in the country. The first of these quantitative methods, which we'll discuss now, is the cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio is nothing but the RBI impounding a portion or a fraction of the deposits mobilized by the banks when, whenever they seek funds from the public. When a bank mobilizes deposits, it cannot lend whatever it mobilizes. Some portion of the money has to be kept aside with the Reserve Bank of India as statutory dues. To give you an example, when a bank mobilizes 100 rupees of deposits from Mr. X, the same 100 cannot be lent to Mr. Y as a loan. Go back to the definition of banking as defined in five, Section 5B of the Banking Regulation Act of 1949. 
it says the primarily the primary responsibility of banks is acceptance of money from the public in the form of deposits for lending investment or otherwise so whenever the bank mobilizes 100 rupees in the form of deposits they cannot lend the entire 100 to the borrowers the reasoning behind this is very simple the deposit to a bank is a liability that means when the public deposits in a bank the bank's liability goes up in the balance sheet because the money belongs to somebody else and when the money is lent to a person in the form of loans they become assets of the bank now imagine a situation where a bank has collected a hundred rupees as deposits and lent the entire hundred as loans and imagine that that loan has turned bad or in other words that the loan has not been re repaid to the bank what will happen when the depositors come asking for the money the bank will not have money to pay the depositors on time and either on time in the case of fixed deposits or on demand in the case of savings bank and current account deposits now the situation when a loan turns bad and if the entire deposits are given as loan and the loan turns bad then the bank will be faced with the rather nasty prospect of saying no to its depositors who come asking for money and that is the reason the reserve bank of india has said that a portion of the deposits will have to be kept aside with the reserve bank of india as statutory dues and this statutory dues are known as the cash reserve ratio crr is a minimum crr is a minimum specified fraction of the total net demand and time liabilities which banks have to hold as reserves either in the form of cash or in the form of deposits with rbi we have seen what are net demand and time liabilities a fraction of the net demand and time liabilities have to be kept aside by the commercial banks in the form of deposits or in the form of cash with the reserve bank of india and that portion is called the cash reserve ratio this is a statutory requirement and is fixed by rbi periodically as i told you a little while earlier this is a statutory requirement by rbi to ensure that banks do not run out of money whenever depositors come asking for their deposits back if a hundred rupees is mobilized to deposit and if all the hundred is lent and that lending or the loans become bad then when the depositors come to the bank for asking for money the bank will not be able to pay the money back to the depositors and that's the reason why the banks ask the uh, why the reserve bank of india asked the banks to keep aside a certain portion of money in the form of deposits with rbi so as to protect the depositor interest as we saw earlier demand liabilities are those where the money is payable on demand for example savings bank account and current accounts time liabilities are deposits which are payable after a period of a certain a certain agreed period like uh, fixed deposits and recurring deposits the aim of cash reserve ratio is to ensure that banks have enough cash to meet the payment needs of their depositors at all times as i told you earlier the banks cannot say no to their depositors whenever the latter comes asking for money so that's the reason why the banks have been asked to advise has been advised to keep a certain portion of their money in the form of statutory dues known as cash reserve ratio is an is an extremely important monetary tool aimed at controlling money supply in the economy the most important point to note is that the banks will not get any interest on the amount maintained by them as crr the crr is a statutory requirement the cash reserve ratio is a statutory requirement and hence the banks will not get any interest on the amount kept with them by uh, kept with the rbi by them either in the form of cash with the rbi or in the form of deposits with the rbi they will not get any interest from the reserve bank of india crr is calculated on a fortnightly average balance of the ndtl of the banks the fortnightly average ndtl of the banks is the basis on which the cash reserve ratio is calculated that is every alternate friday known as the reporting fridays in a month the the first fortnight and the second fortnight are clearly divided and the ndtl or the net demand and time liabilities of the banks as of the first fortnight is the basis on which the crr for the fir first fortnight is maintained and similarly for the second fortnight 
non maintenance of crr will attract penalty from reserve bank of india an increase in crr will mean less money with the banks to lend and hence the interest rates will go up leading to less demand and thereby reducing inflation it's very obvious to understand then that when the crr increases the banks will have less money to lend and when they have less money to lend obviously the interest rates will go up when the interest rates go up there will be less demand for money and when there is less demand the inflation tends to come down a decrease in crr will have the opposite effect a decrease in crr will mean that the banks will have more money to lend and thereby the interest rates will come down and hence there is an increasing inflation rate because of a higher demand for money because of a higher demand for money will mean that higher goods and services are produced and when the higher demand for money is there then the inflation rates go up as of now the cash reserve ratio is at 4% that means the banks have to deposit with the rbi 4% of their average fortnightly net demand and time liabilities so cash reserve ratio as we have seen is one of the most important quantitative methods of monetary policy adopted by the reserve bank of india or it's one of the quantitative tools adopted by the reserve bank of india in its monetary policy when compared to the rest of the world indian crr is not too bad because brazil has got the highest crr of 45% which means that when a brazilian bank mobilizes 100 Brazilian currency in the form of deposits they have to maintain 45% of that as cash reserve ratio with their central bank that is the world's highest and the world's lowest crr is in hungary where the crr is only 1% in india the current crr is at at 4% it has been hovering at between 3 and 5% for a very long time except in certain exceptional situations After having seen what is cash reserve ratio we now turn our attention on the next important quantitative uh, method of controlling money supply in the country by the Reserve Bank of India and that is called the statutory liquidity ratio or SLR SLR is the amount of money that is to be kept with the RBI by the banks as a fraction of their net demand and time liabilities this is prescribed under section 242a of the banking regulation act of 1949 slr is calculated on a percentage of net demand and time liabilities on a daily basis and non perform non maintenance of this slr will attract penalty from rbi the very important difference between cash reserve ratio and statutory liquidity ratio is that cash reserve ratio is maintained on a fortnightly average balance or fortnightly average net demand and time liabilities whereas slr has to be maintained on a daily basis that means every day the banks are liable to maintain slr with the reserve bank of india or statutory liquidity ratio with the reserve bank of india while cash reserve ratio is held in the form of cash in the vaults of reserve bank of india or current account deposits in the case of statutory liquidity ratio banks have to maintain slr or banks have to maintain the statutory liquidity ratio in the form of liquid cash or gold or government securities treasury bills current account balances with rbi etc the most important thing to note is that these instruments of slr must be unencumbered when i say unencumbered which means that they should not be under pledge to anybody or any organization only unencumbered securities are taken into account by the rbi for the purposes of calculating the statutory statutory liquidity ratio unlike crr the money kept in slr will earn the bank some interest the cash kept with reserve bank of india in the form of cash reserve ratio will not earn them any interest that 4% which the banks are required to maintain with the reserve bank of india as crr will not get any income for the banks on the other hand the slr the securities which the banks maintains in the form of slr will earn interest from the government securities treasury bills etc the rates of interest are are decided by the market forces crr is kept as money with reserve bank of india but slr or statutory liquidity ratio let me remind you 
SLR is statutory liquidity ratio is kept in the form of government securities, treasury bills and liquid securities and are in possession of the banks only. Whereas when in CRR the money is kept with the Reserve Bank of India in their vaults as cash or as current account deposits. In the case of statutory liquidity ratio, they are, in the, they are kept in the form of liquid securities and these securities are in possession of the banks only. SLR is a, is a, measure of, is a method of credit control for banks. It acts as a cushion against banks' failures. It helps in financing government deficits. Any reduction of SLR will mean more money for the banks to lend and hence this can change the lending pattern of the bank. When the SLR comes down, the banks will have more money to lend. When the banks have more money to lend, they may do a couple of things. One is that they may decide to change the pattern of lending in, in which case that, for example, they may decide that more money will be lent to a particular section of the industry or a particular section of the society. And similarly, when they have more money to lend, the interest rates will obviously come down. When they have more money to lend, the interest rates will come down. On the other hand, an increase in SLR will mean that the banks have less money to lend and which means that when they have less money to lend, the interest rates will go up. And similarly, the lending pattern of the banks could also go up. And as of now, the statutory liquidity ratio is 20.5% of the net demand and time liabilities. Cash reserve ratio is at 4% and the statutory liquidity ratio is 20.5%. So this is part one of the monetary policy which we have seen now in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon in the next video with the second part of the monetary policy. Until then, thanks for watching and bye.